Okay, we're in Genesis 50, verse 7. So anybody go ahead and please read. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the house of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's house. Only their little ones, their flocks, and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with them both chariots and horsemen. And it was a very great gathering. Just imagine, uh, you know, and with the Egyptians, all the colorful stuff they had. I mean, just beautiful. You know, it would be like uh, the Indians out in the Dakotas with all the beautiful things. It must have been really, really pretty nifty. So, anyway. Then they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and they were there with a great and very solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning of the Egyptians. Therefore, its name was called Abel. Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim, remember, means Egypt, and Abel would be mourning, so the mourning of the Egyptians is what that means. Which is beyond the Jordan. So his sons did for him just as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, that's the same place where Abraham, remember he bought that uh, uh, from, what was his name, the Hittite, um, Ephron the Hittite, he bought it for, I think it was 400 shekels of silver, and he was buried there, he buried Sarah there, and uh, now another generation is being there, buried there as well, so. <sighs> Oh, for a place. there you go. It was on the next place, too. So uh, next page for me. So I should have just skipped a, a page ahead, and there it is. But um, that is still, they know exactly where that is today. And it is a, a it, I, I hate to use the word shrine, but it's a place where both Muslims and Jews go because that's Father Abraham. And to the Muslims, it's Father Ibrahim. But anyway, that, that is still there to this day, this, this particular burial place of Abraham. So... Anyway, and that was bought from Ephron the Hittite. So, okay. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, hmm, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they're <laughs> figuring, you know, I mean, yeah, they have it and they, they think, you know, maybe he was just being nice because dad was alive, right. you know, and, and uh, yeah. you know, they did do him wrong. So good morning, Connie. So uh, anyway, it, whatever. You think that they would have understood when he broke down in tears at getting to see them again and finally revealing himself that that wouldn't have been the case. But for whatever reason, they're still worried about this after all these years. So, so they sent messengers to Joseph saying... Before your father died, he commanded you. <laughs> Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Now, I have no idea. It, I don't think there's any indication in the Bible if they actually got a letter from their father or not. They may have just made that up. You know, Dad wants you to be nice to us. I have no idea. You know, you got to kind of take it at face value and just insert your own thoughts into there. Did they make that up and say, you know, Dad wanted you to be good to us? Or did Dad really say, you know, when you're gone or when I'm gone, tell your brother that I, you know, it's hard to guess, but that's what it says. So you just kind of, what's that? All bets are off. Absolutely. All bets are off, boys. Yeah, you really gave me 30 years of grief. And so, uh, Absolutely. But, you know, once, you know, you, you can't really insert anything in there. But in this case, you kind of have to. It's, it's kind of left up to you because I, I don't believe there's any indication either way. And there may be some rabbinic commentaries or something on that. But either way, you know, the, the, the result is obvious anyway. At the end of the verse and then 18, we'll see. Go ahead. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, 
Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about, as it is, this day, to save many people alive. And here we have exactly the parallel of what will happen when Jesus returns to his people. It's, it, it's exactly the th same thing. The people are going to bow down in his presence. That's clear from Joseph's previous dream, which wasn't totally fulfilled in the Genesis account, that the sons of Israel are going to bow down to Jesus, and he is probably going to say exactly, the, he's probably going to just repeat the words that are already in there. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good, to bring about many people alive as it is today. The greater salvation of Jesus than this. This is a picture of that. And I could, I could actually imagine Jesus saying that to them. Because that, this is something that they know from their own Bible. All of them know the account of Joseph. Even, even if they don't know the Bible very well, which most Jews that I know, we know the Bible much, much better than they do. They will certainly know this account. And I, I can't think of anybody that doesn't know this particular verse. You've heard it in a million sermons. I could see him saying these words to them and them saying, I'm beginning to see why all these things were in the Bible all these years. I wish, oh, I wish I'd read my Bible when I was younger. Whatever. Anyway, there you go. Uh, now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Mm. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of... Hmm? Machir, yeah. The son of Manasseh were also brought up on Joseph's knees. Okay, that particular verse confirms what was already said to Abraham back in, uh, I think it was chapter 15 or 18, where he said, to the fourth generation they will be in bondage in a, a, a foreign land. Okay, now remember it said 400 years they will be um, under oppressors, but they were not in Egypt for 400 years. But he did say that they would be four generations in a foreign land. And that's exactly what it says here because it says, So Joseph dwelt in Egypt and he and his father's household and Joseph lived. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. So we have those three plus we have Israel that went into the land. Okay? Anyway, so uh, uh, it, it was four generations exactly as God had said there. No, no problem with that. The fourth generation is the generation that came out of Egypt. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you. Okay, I imagine, go ahead and I'll check that, but I imagine the word there is, um, uh, not the back, it would be, um, oh, I'm forgetting the word right now, but... Um, divine visitation and go ahead and keep reading though okay. just a side note um, he was one of the youngest brothers so second youngest yes yeah. so how many of his brothers are left yeah. you mean uh, he died. oh I don't know I don't think it gives the it may give the years in chronicles and we could check that out but uh, okay uh, sorry I'll go back the God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. All right, so he went through the, uh, I'm almost to the word I wanted to look for, and I'm sure it's the same one that's in Ruth, which means basically a divine visitation. God intervening in human... 6485, I think, is what I'm looking for. But give me one second. And it's funny, I can't remember the word I'm thinking of. Uh, Pakad. Exactly. So it is. It's a divine visitation. God will surely visit you. Uh, the same word is used in Ruth and in other places. And it means that God is sovereignly intervening in the affairs of human beings for his purposes. So he saw that. He understood that was going to happen. And um, uh, he had them make an oath, which is binding on all of the generations until they leave Israel, is that God will visit you and you shall carry my bones up from here. And in fact, they did do that. And that is recorded in Exodus, um, which we're going to be in. But I think it's in Exodus 13 or 14, where um, uh, probably 13. Let's see here. Consecrate. The, the what? It talks about who, the, what brothers... 
come out of Egypt? Well, it, it says, you know, it gives all the list of the people, but I'm specifically uh, thinking of the, uh, the promise that it says specifically that they carried his bones out with him. And uh, anyway, it's right here in Genesis 13 or 14. I'm not going to find it right away because, let's say, this is a brand new Bible and I don't have anything in it, no highlights or anything to kind of stimulate my memory. But it's right there in that area is that um, they did fulfill the oath by carrying his bones out. Anyway, and then he was buried. So one, I read one commentary, and I can't say this is true, but um, the place where he was carried to and buried was later changed to the same place where Joseph of Arimathea came, and so they kind of wove all that together with Jesus and his burial and all that. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, some people like to try to find things that aren't in there, or some people actually do studies which are very interesting. And but uh, just so you know, there is something. Uh, somebody made a connection between Joseph's bones being carried out and where they were buried, and then um, uh, Joseph of Arimathea and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, just something to think about for the future. So that's it. We're we're done with Genesis, unless anybody has a question about Genesis. When did we begin this course? November, I think. Because it was October I got back, and so it may have been late October. So it's been uh, 10 months, two hours a week, minus one week, and we've had at least four weeks a, uh, a month. So four Are you sure? Because I didn't come until January to this work. church. And you didn't have this class when I came here. Well, I got back in October, and it was very soon after I got back that I started it. I don't think you started until after the first time. I don't either. Uh -huh. Is that right? I'll have to go back and check. I can look on the uh, videotapes. The class started, and it was in January. Yeah. January. Okay, maybe it was then. Maybe it was. But I thought that I'd started right after we... Because you would have been tired when you got back from your long haul. Well, I'm still tired from it. I'm still tired. But I will check that because I honestly don't know. I just thought it was shortly after coming back um, because I started immediately teaching on Sunday. I mean, within two weeks of coming back, I started teaching. Yeah, repeated revelation because uh, whatever. But anyway, we're done with Genesis. So if you don't have any questions, we'll get into Exodus. Anybody? Okay, let's, let's go ahead. The what? <laughs> 65 to go, and a lot of them are really small, boy. I got to tell you what, they're. Yeah, oh, yep, yeah, absolutely. All right, so go ahead. Anybody start reading from Exodus 1 1? Somebody else. I'll tell you what, um, well, no, they're easy names. Go ahead, whoever wants to read. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. Okay, I think I brought this up when we did the uh, account before, but in Acts chapter 7, it gives a different number of people that went to Egypt. Okay, and if have I mentioned that in this class? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, did anybody not get that? Me. Okay. Well, real quickly, we can turn to Acts chapter seven, and it gives you a different number of how many went down there. And just so you know, it's not a contradiction. The accounts are completely reconcilable. I don't have it in front of me, but part of it is that Joseph was in the land. He had children. Um, anyway, it, it is reconcilable. So at some point, if you see that and you say, "Well, I know it was 70. Um, Jacob went down to Egypt and he died there. Oh, 75, verse 714. Then Joseph sent and called his uh, father Jacob and all his relatives to him, 75 people. So Jacob went down to... Uh, anyway, if you count up the number of them and the way that they're termed, there's no contradiction. But Acts will explain things a lot. Of, as I said, Stephen's speech in Acts 7 probably gives you more information about the Old Testament than anywhere else that either clarifies things or seems to muddy the water until you realize that it's saying something in a different context. Okay, But Acts chapter 7 is really a masterful piece of uh, literature as far as I'm concerned. And every single verse you need to take and you need to really look through them carefully. But it says 75 there, it says 70 here. No contradiction, I assure you. And if, if anybody's worried about that, and that's why I bring that up, is so people don't later think, oh, there's an error. There isn't. We can get that information, or you can just go online. And there's lots of people that have made the commentaries of 
who was there, who went, and what the differences are.